Welcome back. We have obtained an exit visa. Which hopefully means Oscar will let us leave and he won't put any more obstacles in our path. You never know though, so let's not get too excited before we get downstairs. You know, it occurred to me, it's kind of weird that I had never heard of Sokal before playing his games. Never read or even seen any of his comics. Despite reading quite a lot of Belgian comics when I grew up, like Tintin, Asterix, Lucky Luke, um, Siska and Visca, I guess. But I've never Oscar, seen Sokal. Can't you please forget about procedure just for once? Your request is refused, Kate Walker. Um, okay. okay. See you later, Oscar. Yes, Kate Walker. I guess we need to give him the visa, which you have to do from this view. Here is the visa. I hope it's regulation, my dear Oscar. Hmm? Hmm. It is regulation. Here is your ticket. Is it me or did it sound like he um, was sad <laughs> that we managed to produce a regulation visa? Was sad he couldn't obstruct us any further. All right, it's the same uh, train ticket as before, except it's departing from Barockstadt instead of Valadilan. Have a good journey, Kate Walker. So, can we go now? Indeed. We are already very late, Kate Walker. <sighs> and whose fault is that? You know, likewise, it's kind of strange that there's not a bigger presence of Belgian comic offers in game design. In Tintin would probably make a really good adventure game. Having said that, I... There probably is a Tintin game that I just don't know of. Not any really famous games, anyway. Um. Alright, we have to give him the ticket that he just gave us, but you know, that's just how this works. Here you go, Oscar. Thank you, Kate Walker. Now, please return to your seat, Kate Walker. Yes, Oscar. Immediately, Oscar.
Okay. Looks like we've arrived somewhere else. Perhaps finally where Hans is. That'd be nice. Um, I don't think we need anything from the train this time. Not let, that we could get it last time, even though we did need it. Let's see where we are. Oh, Oscar's not here this time. And it looks like we can only get off the train on one side this time. It's very uh, ominous looking place. I kind of like the you know the transition you go from like the really picturesque Valle de Len to the grandiose architecture of Barockstadt and now this like post industrial <laughs> landscape. Kinda of feels like a former Soviet industrial facility or something. We might be in Russia by this point, or at least Eastern Europe. Would have been former Soviet either case. Um, let's see where Oscar's hanging out. Kate Walker! Kate Walker! Oscar, what's going on? Why has the train stopped? Where are we? The springs of the train are unwound again, Kate Walker. As for the question pertaining to our geographical location, I really haven't the slightest idea. Well, we'd better get looking for a winding machine, my dear Oscar. I hope that this place actually has one. The air here is so polluted that I could not possibly risk leaving the locomotive. My joints might corrode irreparably. Right. Let's see. Of course. Once again, Oscar cannot help us, and it will be up to us. Hopefully it won't be as complicated to wind a train as it was last time. But you know. Okay, let's try looking on the bright side here. I need to stretch my legs. Is there something wrong, Kate Walker? Are you uncomfortable? Are the passenger facilities on this train substandard? I shall draw up a formal complaint form for you immediately. No, Oscar, everything's fine, I assure you. A little walk will do me good, that's all. Even if the air is apparently terribly polluted here. Wonder if this factory, if that's what it is, is still in use. Doesn't look like it at first glance. Gosh, it's really gloomy here. I wonder where on earth I'm going to find a winding machine. I have total confidence in you, Kate Walker. You are, after all, a brave and resourceful woman. Yeah, right. Sure. Don't you know that flattery will get you everywhere, Oscar? Wait. Oscar, you couldn't make a little effort for just this once. If we both went looking for the winding machine, the two of us together might find it quicker. You are in all probability correct, Kate Walker. But the high level of heavy metal miasma that pollutes the atmosphere could cause havoc to my wheel work. Okay. I don't have any way of verifying if that's true or not. Let's hope Hans Varlberg once lived here as well. Maybe he planned for his locomotive's unplanned stop and installed a winding machine as well. Otherwise, it's not looking great for the rest of the journey. Do not forget that Hans Varlberg is a genius in the true sense of the word. But is he a genius with a sense of forward planning? We will find that out when we find the winding machine. My god, Oscar. What would I do without you? Uh, not be here, probably. I guess so. It does seem kind of weird for... Uh, I mean, as smart as Hans Vorlberg obviously is being able to build all this and design all this stuff, he seems to have the mind of a child and therefore, you know, building uh, these winding machines so you would need them 50 years later does seem a little bit far-fetched. But I guess we'll just have to uh, accept that that is what he did. It's not impossible, at least. We just keep stopping. When will we ever get to the end of this journey? Simply wind up the spring and we can set off immediately. From your mouth to God's ears. Yeah, if only it was that easy. I mean, it is that easy, except, you know, 
winding up the spring. Took quite a lot of effort last time. See you soon, Oscar. I shall stay right here, Kate Walker. I guess we're just assuming that Hans isn't here. Well, I guess we're not in Siberia yet or something. Um, an imposing looking structure. Well, if there is a winding machine, it's probably along the track somewhere. So let's just keep going that way. Is, did, did Hans build this track or is this just regular train track? And if so, um, how is Oscar fitting into like scheduled train services? Is he obeying signals? I think I'm asking way more questions about this than they ever intended me to. Let's just go with that, uh, though. Because, um, I mean, I can accept Hans building winding machines, but building the track, that seems kind of unlikely. Alright, so we could get up this ladder into this weird <laughs> um, communist robot thing at the end of the track. And it looks like somebody used this as a place to sleep. Interesting. And there's a voice cylinder. I guess that proves that um, Hans was here. Komkolsgrad voice cylinder. It also tells us the name of this place, even though Kate doesn't know it yet. I guess we are in Komkolsgrad. Which at least sounds like it's in Russia, so... Making progress. And I guess this is his design for the... Uh, giant robot thing. Which I guess is some kind of industrial tool. It can hold different uh, implements. Currently it's holding this... Scythe? Hook? Not sure. That's what we saw anyway. But it looks like it can have different tools. Also looks like it can have bars in between its legs, which it currently does not. And there's something marked with an X. I don't know what that's about. Speaking of diagrams, the uh, key thing that came out of the front of the train to open the wall in Borokstadt is actually something you can see on the um, the blueprint drawings of the train in Valadilen. So it's kind of a nice attention to detail. And there's also whatever this is. A handle. Or something. Alright. What is this, though? Looks like we can... look out over the um, station. There's another one of those robots on the other side. I guess. Some kind of control panel. Doesn't look in great shape, though. That does nothing. If that's going to work, it looks like something's missing. All right. Maybe the handle goes there. Oh, it does. That did nothing. Oh! It moves. Um, that still does nothing. That looks like a Vorlberg key, so maybe something to do with the winding? I'm not sure. Can we go any further forward? We can. Uh, looks like we're over the train now. Well, what do you know?
train wound. That was easy. This will be a short stop. Wait, the passenger car has a roof in the has a window in the roof? Never noticed that before. Can we go any further forward? The answer is no. Alright, but that's great. We can actually just we've wound the train, we can move on. And I can't go that way. Oh. Yeah, we are actually missing the bottom part of the ladder here. Which did not move with the robot. It's kinda hard to tell. But that means there is nowhere to go from here. We have to return to the start. You can just about see it. Uh, I don't have a mouse to point with, but you can see the bottom part of the, la of the ladder at the back there. Of the back of the platform. I wonder what's in this middle area. Does this serve a purpose? Oh, she is willing to climb down, even though there is no ladder here. I guess we can get on this ledge from here. <laughs> she, like, acts like that's a difficult jump. I mean, I guess it is kind of precarious, this high off the ground. I think that's all just the jump back click spot. Uh, what's this, though? Alright. Some room inside the factory building. And it looks like we need something here. It's just a small hole in this sheet metal that's over the window. Can't go anywhere from here. All right, well, at least we know it's here, in case we need it. But in order to get back on the ground, we'll, we'll have to return. It's nice that we don't have to uh, spend that much time uh, on winding this time. That would have been a bit repetitive. So Carl just seem, uh, does seem to like his repetitive puzzles. In this game, it's winding the train everywhere you arrive. In Amazon, it uh, was finding the floppy, from what I remember. It's not too bad though, because the puzzles. Wait, who's that? Hey, you there! Um, that was awfully suspicious. I said it wasn't too bad because at least the solutions are different every time. It's not the exact same puzzle. Um, that guy, did he take something from the train? Let's see if we can follow him. He went in here. I guess this is the entrance? That door is locked. I've got to find another way around. But it is also not a way in we can use. Hmm. Oscar's no longer in the locomotive, even though he said he would not leave it. Uh-oh. I have a bad feeling about this. Did her shadow just um, join her with a delay? Kind of looked like it. Nothing so far. Everything is still here. My God, Oscar! Oscar, talk to me. <coughs> Maybe we need to untie him before he can talk to us. Uh, is he missing his hands? Uh-oh.
Are you okay? Why, it is absolutely inadmissible, intolerable, and... and... indescribable! I... I have been attacked! What do you mean you've been attacked? My hands! I no longer have them! They have been stolen! My God, you haven't got your hands! But who did this? What's going on here? We can be sure of one thing, Kate Walker. That this heinous crime was committed by a barbarian. A dysfunctional individual whose behavior lacks all finesse. Did you get a look at your attacker? Tell me exactly how it happened. I was standing here polishing up my metalwork. I was just thinking that with all the dust in the air, it would be a good idea to... Oscar. I was very busy, and I suddenly felt two powerful arms grab me from behind and tie me up before I had the chance to defend myself. I wanted to call out, but my attacker gagged me before I could emit the slightest sound. Then he dismantled my hands with a terrifying pair of pliers. It was horrible. I can believe it, my poor Oscar, but did you see him? He was a real barbarian, I tell you. He had bloodshot eyes, steel teeth, and brown scaly skin, and he emitted foul odors. He was a monster, Kate Walker, a real monster, and he had a weapon. Oscar, please calm down. Everything's going to be all right. Okay, well, I guess I should have known things weren't going to be that easy. We found the train, but without Oscar's hands, I don't think we're leaving. Who the heck would be interested in automaton hands? Even though I say so myself, my hands are two marvels of technology. Please promise to return them to me intact as quickly as possible. I am very attached to them, Kate Walker. You were attached to them, Oscar, but like you said, I'm a brave and resourceful woman. Thank you, Kate Walker. But please, above all, do be careful. Don't you worry about that, Oscar. Right, Oscar. Let's go find this hand bandit. And this time we're not going to be such a pushover. Kate Walker, please do not think that this problem does not concern me. But if it's all the same to you, I would so much prefer to stay here, just to be on the safe side. An engineer never abandons his train, after all. Yeah, sure. Another good reason not to lend a... I mean, not to help me out. Kate Walker, even an automaton deserves a little compassion. I have just been savagely assaulted. Oh, I can feel one of my spasms coming on. I am on the verge of a clockwork breakdown. And all you do is accuse me of being selfish. Okay, take a rest, Oscar. You're not much use without your hands anyway. One would think that he wouldn't feel so safe in the train anymore after what just happened. Sticking with Kate might be a wiser thing to do. Anything else you remember, Oscar? I have told you everything, and I'd rather not think about it anymore. How old do you think your attacker was? How old? Such monsters are ageless. I tell you, my wheel work froze with fear. I think he must have been an older man. Someone with a soft spot for automatons. An expert who knows how to dismantle a pair of hands with a pair of pliers. I'm afraid I don't quite follow you. And what if it was Hans Varlberg himself? Kate Walker, in spite of the respect in which I hold you, permit me to say that such an idea is stupid. Hans Varlberg, my attacker. A father would never attack his offspring. Get a grip on yourself. I should point out in all modesty that my attacker must have had muscles to overcome an automaton of my build. Hmm. Maybe you're right there, Oscar. I do apologize. Plus, I'm pretty sure Oscar would just give Hans his hands if he asked. So, yeah, that's kind of a stupid idea there, Kate. Do you know if your attacker stole anything else? As soon as he'd swiped my hands, he ran away. Well, at least that's one good piece of news. The train's still intact. What do you mean, intact? I am the train engineer. It was designed for me and I for it. By maiming me in this brutal manner, the barbarian has also mutilated our locomotive. Without me and my hands, we're never going anywhere. Sure, okay. Could you maybe tell me how the train works then? 
That is strictly forbidden, Kate Walker. There is only one engineer, and that train engineer is me. I am sure you don't have a license or authorization or even a deputy engineer's permit. Do you really think it's the right moment to get wrapped up in red tape, Oscar? Regulations are regulations, Kate Walker. All right, so the idea of Kate learning to drive the train is out. Not because she couldn't, but because Oscar's being stubborn again. I guess we have no choice but to try and get his hands back. Right. I'm done. Take care of yourself, Oscar. Good luck, Kate Walker. And don't forget me. Poor Oscar. I do feel for him. Wait. That wasn't here before. Looks like the attacker left his um, shears behind. I guess that's what he used to uh, remove the hands. Wait, didn't Oscar say they were pliers? Whatever. Um, I don't know. He left it behind, I guess. I do feel bad for Oscar. And I do want to help him, so... Even if he wasn't required for the train, I think at this point, despite his um, procedure-based blocking of our progress, he does not deserve to be handless. Well, we already saw we couldn't follow the attacker into the factory via the front door, so we need to find another way in. Um, let's see what's this way. Um... Boxes of explosives, I guess. And a lever. Which brings up an elevator. That could be a way in. Hello? Hello? Dan, can you hear me? Da Dan, is that you? I can't hear you so good. Dan? Hey, can you talk? It's about the last conversation. I, are you still mad at me? Come on, this is, it's important. Dan, you're breaking up. I'll try and call you when I get out of this mine. You Kate! Come on, what's happening? Listen, we've got to talk. Look, the line's just getting worse and worse. I'm hanging up. Okay, at least um, they're not portraying perfect cell signal inside this mine, I guess it is. I mean, it's pretty unlikely that she would even still have cell signal here at all, especially given it's 2002. But hey, what can you do? Or a lever here to, I guess that's to call I don't the need elevator. To do that. But it's already here, so we don't need to use it. Kind of dark in here. Actually, I take that back. It's very dark in here. It's too dark to continue. I might lose my way. All right, I guess we need a lantern or some other kind of light source. If we want to go this way. Um, what else here? That's something. This thing's jammed. If that's going to work, it looks like something's missing. I don't know what this is. Could be a generator, maybe? If so, it might provide some lights if we can get it working, but we need to find whatever goes here, and I, I doubt it's shares. It's not. And I just realized I forgot to listen to the voice cylinder when I was in the train. So distracted with Oscar's attack. So let's do that. 
Their shadow is behaving very weird every time you get in the train. Be interesting to check that out. Despite our rush to get his hands back, I guess. We have some time to do this. My dear brother, what joy to have news of you after your long silence during the war years. So, you're working for the Russians now. I tell you, we've been hearing some worrying stories about them here. Just your description of that dingy factory makes me cough. But it's so good to hear that your talent is being recognized for its true value, and that your automaton creations are taking the place of workers for all those menial jobs. I'm so proud that Vorlberg automatons are making such a contribution, even if it is small, to the improvement of people's lives. Meanwhile, back in Valadolin, we've been licking our wounds after the war years. Some people have returned, others not. Life is slowly coming back, but it's taking time. All my love, Anna. So I guess this was another voice cylinder that Anna sent to Hans while he was staying here. After the Second World War, which, yeah, probably not the greatest time to be in the Soviet Union. But it seemed like Hans made the best of it, helping workers with his mechanical inventions. However, we still need to find another way into the factory. And I guess we'll have to do that in the next video.